Hello, hello everyone. Mihai with Wolfpack Society here, your Seattle real estate agent. Today's video is going to be about uh, the current market conditions, how the market changed in the past couple of months, what was the driving factor uh, in this change and how the sellers are reacting to the new market, how the buyers are reacting in the new market, and uh, what is going to be the probable outcome for the next events that are going to change uh, the real estate market probably more. But before that, consider subscribing to my channel. I'm putting tons of good information for educational purposes. Also, this gives me a lot of motivation to create more content like that. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button. Let's dive in. So we get to the point that the market changed drastically. So we get to the point that the current market is uh, completely different than the previous market you cannot even compare it's so different that i cannot uh, believe how fast it changed and of course uh, the biggest factor that is driving this change is the interest rates and let's just uh, uh, make some things clear from the beginning that the price for real estate is dictated by supply and demand right so as per Census bureau until now in 2022 we have 1.3 million homes formation or in other words, the demand. On the other hand, we have uh, the supply, which is created by the home builders. So uh, another, another moment to understand here is that a home seller that is putting his home on the market, this is not supply. He is putting his home on the market, that's plus one home on the market, but he also has to buy another property. So that's plus one, minus one, there is no supply created here. So who is created the supply? Supply is created by the home builders, right? So the home builders right now, they're getting through a lot of difficulties created by the post pandemic effects, which is like the still the shortage is still there. The lumber price kind of adjust a little bit. It's down 30% since uh, the pandemic time, but still is shortage. So the household formation, there are more as uh, supply created by the home builders with 100,000, right? So there are 1.3 million homes completed as of now. So the shortage is still there. Plus, let's not forget about one very important fact, which is uh, that every year in US, there are 100,000 homes destroyed from different reasons, like uh, homes being too old or they are condemned by the state or there is a, you know, a highway, you know, building and then they have to destroy like, I don't know, five, five 10, 15 properties or uh, natural disasters, tornadoes, hurricanes, whatever, whatever reasons, they are all 100,000 homes. So if you add up this together, there is a shortage of 100,000 homes between household formations and uh, homes completed by builders. If you adopt this 100,000 homes that are destroyed, there is a current shortage of homes of 200,000. There are 200,000 more buyers than homes. So that means the prices shouldn't go down, right? So the biggest factor, of course, is the interest rates. So what is going on with the interest rates and why we're having this, this rate hikes literally every month? Well, of course, this is uh, driven by uh, the inflation. This is what they say. Well, the inflation is high. In order to curve down the inflation, we have to raise the interest rates. But at this point, we are literally at the mercy of the Fed. Because on the one hand, they are raising the interest rates to say that we're curving down the inflation. On the other hand, they are creating more money and they're sending everywhere in the world and they're patching different holes in the economy and figuring their, their issues abroad, right? So this kind of makes no sense. If you know that you have a crazy inflation, I think the first thing that you do, you stop spending, right? You stop spending so the inflation will start to kind of be at the same level. And then with the higher interest rates, you curve down this inflation, right? So at this rate, if they keep in creating new money, the inflation can go up and the rates keep, can go up. So that's why I'm saying we're literally at the mercy of the Fed. So if this is created artificially, you know, this, this housing crisis that we're having right now, I don't know they might want to you know kind of balance the market because it was going very very fast before so i'm not certain about that it's just this is pure my observation of the market as a realtor 
and also with uh, from from my discussions with different friends realtors that been in 20 30 years in the business also with some uh, mortgage lenders that uh, you know passed uh, many ups and downs like that so if they decide at one point because the buyers are still here they're waiting so everybody now is waiting for the rates to go down right so but what's gonna happen when the rates are gonna go down well everybody's gonna start buying again so we might have a frenzy market again so this kind of makes no sense um, on the other hand right now if you're deciding to buy you have opportunity to refinance later on right so right now uh, the prices are negotiable big time you know I've seen different kind of price cuts I've seen you know buyers that are getting over a hundred thousand in price drops when they're negotiating the price uh, it all depends on the seller so now let's go to the point of how the sellers are reacting to this market so I think that most of the sellers that are in this market selling they are forced to sell in a way because they know the cards are not on their side, right? So they know that it's not going to be multiple offer situation. They know that they will have to pay closing costs. They know that they might uh, drop the price in the order to get their home sold. So probably all these people that are selling right now, they're in a uh, you know, uh, life situation that they are forced to sell. Either a divorce, either an estate either they're losing the home they lost their job or some something else because if i would be a seller in this market and if i would have a choice to wait two three years until the market rebounds and then sell it for more and having a potential bidding war for my home i would better do that than sell in this market so to be clear with the sellers the sellers most of them i would say most of them they are very motivated because they are forced to sell from different reasons so uh, the moment you put your house on the market now in this market i know that you're a motivated seller doesn't matter if it's like one day or two day or 10 days on the market i know that i can drop the price i can negotiate the price down because of this uh, of this uh, conclusions right so now let's go to buyers so let's be clear first time home buyers are terrified right now to buy uh, usually first time home buyers are in general very spooky but specifically in this market they are so afraid to buy uh, and most likely most of the first time home buyers they will buy when it's gonna be hype when the rates are gonna go down a little bit and uh, they will get in the multiple offer situation they usually buy when everybody buys they don't move strategically right now most of the buyers that are moving forward in this market and purchasing these are uh, buyers that are more seasoned like investors mm -hmm. they understand that this slowdown is not going to be for so long maybe a year maybe a year and a half this is going to stop eventually the rates are going to go down they cannot keep this rate so high for so long unless they want to crash completely the housing market yeah i mean the fed so i don't think this is in their interests to crush completely the housing market, but uh, this is not gonna be on the table for so long, this negotiation and paying for the closing costs. So some buyers that understand this market, they move forward. So uh, in the past uh, couple of months, I've closed uh, several transactions and most of these transactions are uh, people that already have a home, second home or third home or investors that they already have like five, seven homes or their flippers. So most of buyers right now, they're not really interested, even investors, I mean, right? So investors, they are not really interested to buy and do flips. Very rarely, because they understand it's a big risk. It's a big turnaround of the money, you know? Um, what they do is they, they buy, they um, uh, in a way flip it for the rent, but they're not selling it. They're putting some other people in the rent and they're gonna wait until the market is gonna change in their favor and then they're gonna sell. This actually makes a lot of sense because rent prices increased with 22%. So uh, it's a really great market. Buy it right now, refinance later, but right now put somebody in for rent and wait until the market changes. So this is the, the what the buyers and sellers are you know, filling in this market. And then now let's go to the probable outcome 
uh, this is kind of hard to predict right now what is going to happen and it's really uh, hard to say because the rates is a big factor and somebody says that the rates are going to go to 10%. Somebody says that it's uh, less likely to go to 10%. But even if it's going to go to 10%, they're not going to stay too long at 10%. So and if we're going to officially go into recession when we're going to see on the news saying, OK, we're in a recession. OK, well, from that moment, we're going to know what is coming. And that's the interest rates are going to start dropping because every recession that we had in this country always followed with a drop in the interest rates. So I hope you liked my video. Hit it a thumbs up if you find this information useful and consider subscribing again. Thank you so much for watching and seeing the next video.